Hello everyone, this is Goosebumps Godzilla, and today I'm going to be talking about Shock Street from the 35th Goosebumps book, A Shocker on Shock Street, and how Shock Street is actually an evil place. So viewer beware, you're in for a scare, and let's get started. So, um, Shock Street is, seems like at least, a scary amusement park. And that's pretty much what it claims to be in the book of Shock on Shock Street. In the twist ending, the main protagonist and the main protagonist's friend is a robot. And the whole book was actually a test to see if the park is safe. And there's a few weird things about that statement. And it's that they have giant praying mantises. And they're worried about the safety. You may think, oh yeah, it's an animatronic, so... Obviously, it'll be safe because the animatronic has scripted movements. But this mantis is obviously real. For one thing, I don't know an animatronic that can spit out black goo. I don't know, I've just never seen that before. I don't know if it's actually physically possible. But I've been to Disney World before, and Disney World has that money. And they do not have animatronics like that. But, then again, they're not going for a horror theme, so maybe they can actually do stuff like that. I don't know. But to me, that seems otherworldly, that they can get an animatronic that can spit out black goo. Another thing is the Goosebumps film. The giant praying mantis in the Goosebumps film is definitely real. Its design is real, and it has some unscripted move movements. It's chasing a car. It's doing all this crazy stuff. And... You can't tell me that wasn't an animatronic in the book. So, obviously, in A Shocker on Shock Street, the Mantis is not an animatronic. And if one thing's not an animatronic, doesn't that mean that all the other things in Shock Street are not animatronics? Like the Wolfman thingy in, a shock, in shock Street, and also the Graveyard... I was going to say Graveyard Ghouls, but, um, you know, Graveyard Zombies in Shock Street, all those crazy things that happen to the main protagonist in the book have to be real, and it can't just be a giant praying mantis and that's it. I mean, they have real spiders and worms that drop from the ceiling, which is itself a safety hazard, but when you have a real giant praying mantis in an amusement park, there's got to be a problem. I mean, this place has to be evil. And so, that led me to this theory that Shock Street has to be evil. They can't... Why are they doing a safety... But why are they doing a safety test, you might say. If Shock Street's evil, they would not do a safety test. But... If they're also sure about the safety of Shock Street, then... Why in the world would they get robots? Wouldn't they just get a normal human? It definitely costs less. Why'd they go through all the hassle to get robots? And the thing is, is that they're probably trying not to let a test human go in there first. Because if a test human dies, then uh, the park's probably never going to be open. And since these people probably have evil intentions, then they probably try to get it open by saying that the robot tests actually work, thus making it safe for children. And then they do their evil stuff. And this led me to another theory in that could Shock Street actually be Horrorland? Because the whole Shock Street thing seems to be one ride, correct? So Horrorland has multiple rides in it. And it's honestly pretty big. There's so much stuff that they can do there. And most likely and also they have some real stuff in there while well, some of the stuff is just fake like the doom slide and all that stuff they have real monsters working there they have real stuff in this park and if they have real stuff in this park then that could mean that shock street is um part of horland because again that's just one ride and horland has a large series of rides Right, obviously very rich, and Horrorland itself is evil, 
And they do have some humans there that kind of help them out. Like, the original owner of Horrorland, I forgot his name, but there was a human owner of Horrorland, so they definitely have at least some human workers or something like that. So, Horrorland, probably part of Shock Street. But, tell me what you think in the comments section below. Do you think Shock Street's evil and it's a part of Horrorland? Do you think Shock Street's just evil? Do you think everything's fake in Shock Street? And it's only amusement park going way out there? But tell me what you think. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And that is the end of my video.